match review. This is a completely original idea that yours truly came up with where you guys send me your wrestling matches and I critique them, I review them. And basically, I just talk shit about your wrestling. So just jumping right into it, we have a 170 pounder, he sent me his match. I don't know if he wants me to say his name or not. When you guys email me, tell me if you want me to say your name or include any information you want me to include, if like you want your Instagram or your Twitter or something, shout it out. Just jumping right into it. The match starts at the end of the first period. Okay, so. First things first, this kid goes for a very, very terrible shot. And your hands and head blocked his shot first. So there was no need for you to drop to your knee. You should have been able to recognize that, that your hands got underneath him and your head was level changed far enough and that's sufficient to block him. Your knees should not have gone to the mat. If your knees go to the mat, then the first thing that you should be doing is throwing your hands up to block him from spinning. You have to be looking to go underneath their armpits and stick your hands up to block their hip, okay? Whoever gets under the, the other person armpit win. If you get under their armpit, you are going to win this position. Now you were an athlete and you were able to get your hips square, so that's good. But just know an athlete is gonna come along and he might just do this to you. See, he could have scored two right there. You got, uh, you guys go back for inside control. Nice shove, he's got a wrist. Okay, so right here, he does like a little half-ass snap. And before you ever shoot, before you ever commit to a shot, you need to set up, okay? You shouldn't commit to a shot off of someone else's setup. You shouldn't shoot off of someone else initiating the pressure, you know what I mean? Unless they fail the shot and you're reshooting, like as they're standing up, that's the only scenario I would do this. You need to do something to move their head and get past their hands. Because what happened here was he sets up and his hands are already in perfect position to block your shot. All right, you get past his head, but both of his hands end up underneath your armpit right away. And he just brings you right back up, okay? You're an athlete, so this almost worked, but just understand that it won't work every time, especially if you wrestle someone that's really good. So look, his hips are far, both his arms are underneath your armpit, and look, he just brings you right back up. Okay, you, you need to set up. You need to decide a setup if you wanna shoot, okay? Don't just shoot because you think, like, oh, I can get this, like, you know what I mean? You have to have a plan in your head before you commit to something, before you can fully commit. You're standing up a little bit, I don't like that. I'd yell at you if I was your coach. That kid goes for a bad shot, no setup. You see, your hands were in the way so he couldn't even touch your legs. You have to understand that. Goes back to the tie up. If you, if you don't know any setups from the tie up, dude, then get out of the tie up. Right, you, like, break the tie up and figure out a setup. If you don't know a setup from this position, then you need to break from that position and before you get interlocked in this, because you know you're gonna get in this position because you just spent like 30 seconds in that, you need to think of a setup from that position, okay? You need to th think of a setup from there. You can't just hang out there and hope for something to win. Being defensive is not a, a, like, is not a first lane of attack. You're gonna lose if the first thing you think of is to be defensive. You need to be actively thinking. You need to be thinking of all the setups you know from this position when you're in that position. Okay, that's the end of the period. And from here, I think he defers. Choose bottom. All right, beginning of the second period. Okay, good stand up from right here. You spin quick, get under the armpit. But you did good at controlling the leg. You get on the outside. Now, I think there should have been two right here. I think that should have been two. But you get under, right here. And now this could probably be a scenario from like either bad practice partners or I don't know what it is. But you're in good position right here. He's blocking you with his wrist, which is like what he's supposed to do. You get the half and then right there, okay? Right here, the space between your wrist, his shoulder and your head, there's too much space right there. All right, so he went from getting, from being in a half and his shoulder being like this pushing him back, right? The most important part of the half 
is isolating this shoulder so you can turn it as a weight with a lever. You had full control of his head, but you lost control of this shoulder because your, your head should have been in the armpit instead of on the hips. You have to pinch his shoulder with your head. All right, because what happened was your head was down here and he just went like this and he was able to belly out and get under. The whole point of this move, the most important part of this move is having this shoulder isolated, right? The shoulder, like isolating the shoulder is the most important part because what you're trying to pin is right behind the shoulders, right? You're trying to turn the shoulders directly to the mat. If you could, you would take his shoulders and just put him to the mat. That's the easiest way to get his back to the mat, right? Controlling his leg is not as important as isolating this far, sh uh, this near shoulder, okay? So look, he gets out, he bellies out, he gets back up, he gets to a base, you got that western hook, and now right here, okay? You're, you're hanging on to his hip, which is good, and you've got the western hook, but the western hook is there to point his foot away from his, like, to point his foot the other way, you know what I mean? If his knee is like this, the western hook is supposed to hook around his foot, and bring it almost more towards his head so he doesn't really have any control of it, okay? And you're supposed to pick that foot up a little bit. Holding on to his hip is to stop him. You have, you're hanging on to that hip so that he doesn't stand up, all right? You're supposed to have all your weight on that hip because the second you, he, like, you don't make it hard for him to stand up, he will stand up, right? You can see it right here. You have the western hook, you, like all your weight is on the western hook and you have no weight on his hip. So he just stood up on that. Okay, you could have prevented that, understand that. And there's a ton of things you can work from a western hook. Back to a single leg, onto his butt, good shit. See, this is good wrestling on your part. It's just like very minor things you need to tweak. Third period, he chooses bottom. Good, you caught the elbow. Okay, you got the wrist. You go for the snow plow. You caught that wrist on your right side. Um, looks like you're going for like a ball and chain, maybe. Some sort of a tilt, I can't really see. Going for that half, you got your arms under his armpits. Go for the cross face, all right. So right here, you go for the cross face and then you start going for a cradle. The second you hit that cross face, you need to know that you're going for the cradle, okay? If you're gonna try and hit that cradle, when you hit the cross face, you're, you, have to ha or you have to already have your hand planted behind the knee that you're gonna cradle his head to, and the cross face has to, you have to cross face, and you have to like get your hand locked into a certain position, and you need to move your hand like with his face right here, with your feet, okay? Your hand stays in one spot, you cross face, and then you start circling towards, like you start circling around so that your hands can interlock, okay? So the hand behind the knee never moves. When you cross face, right, you, it comes with the whole power of your feet, your hand, your whole body's coming behind that, trying to turn his head into his knee so that you can lock up. Okay, but you have to you have to commit to that whole sequence of things happening. You only you went cross face, you hop sides, and then you went behind the knee. Okay, that has to happen all at once. If you plan on pinning someone with that. Cross face again, go behind the knee, see? You went cross face, off the hips, behind the knee. And then he gets that arm on the far side. Cause there wasn't enough power. Like his his head wasn't turned hard enough. All right, now. You're going for the Christmas. He's on his base. I would personally go for like a three quarter Nelson right here. Like where you lock around his head and arm and then you, with the Western hook, you just pull him in. I don't know why you don't hit that dude. You literally have the Western hook good. Like, it, it looks like they can't get out of your western hook. 
you just need to get good at hitting the three quarter Nelson and seeing like there's going to be a space. There's gonna, they're going to be like this. They're like their hands are going to be in front of their head and there's going to be a space in between their armpit. You just need to get your hand. You need to get your right hand underneath their armpit and locked around their head. And you have to pinch it to your uh, pinch it to your like hips and you need to walk that Western hook around. But you could definitely hit that. Goes for a bad shot. Snap. Okay, right here. This is a perfect case of like, you are just a better athlete than him. Okay? He, like, because he was standing up, you didn't need to set up, but this is still bad for you. This is still bad form for you. You didn't set up. You need to set up before you shoot. Okay? Like, I guess you standing up and him standing up with you and then you shooting is like kind of a setup, but you're trying to force that onto him. You're trying to force this scenario onto him, okay? If you're trying to take him down, if you're trying to take down your, uh, your opponents effectively, you know what I mean? You can't just rely on him eventually standing up during the match to shoot properly. You need to make this scenario happen. You turn the corner good, Got the two, that's good. You should have been looking for the half right away. Right away you should be looking for like a pinning combination. Personally, I'm always looking like, as soon as I have the hips isolated, I'm trying to isolate a shoulder, personally. You know what I mean? Right here you've got a uh, forearm, near leg, like, I don't know what to call that. You're about to hit a Turk. See, right there with the half, you're isolating the shoulder, which is good. Um, yeah, see? Oh yeah, you need to try and put that hand through. You, like he's got his shoulder like this, you need to try and put that hand in between. Uh, you need to get your shoulder in between him and the mat. And oh, there you did it. That's good. Right. And look at you stick him. Yeah, you need to you need to get more perpendicular. Unless you're gonna hook a leg, unless you're gonna hook his near leg and like pick him up, then you need to stay more perpendicular. Okay. So that's the end of those matches. So overall, very good matches. I'm proud of my viewers. But if you guys like that video, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. I try to post a new video every day. But until next time, I'll see you guys. Peace.